Um, yeah, hi. This is a talk about PU parts, or rather not a talk, but rather a buff. Um, I'll explain why it's a buff and not a talk. It's mostly, um, because um, PU parts scans the whole archive and generates a lot of work and I'm the only one working with it mostly, so I look for new people who would like to help me with it. I'll explain a bit what PU parts does, what problems are, and then I would just like you to file bugs. <laughs> um, yeah, whatever. If you have questions, just ask them. You don't have to wait till the end. Um, fine. Um, I started preparing the slides only two hours ago. <laughs> um, I know PU parts in and out, but still, um, I wish I had more time. Um, that's probably because I was involved in doing this conference. I maintain a few packages in Debian, um, but mostly nowadays I do Debian Edu and PU parts. I use Debian since a long time, and for a long time I believed, believed that some, what's what I do now with PU parts now has been done since always. I always thought that Debian packages have to comply to policy and this was somehow tested. While in truth it's only been tested since six years. That's when Lars started writing PU parts. Um, so who may, how many of you have packages in the archive? I guess most everybody. Um, how many of you have run PU parts on them or run PU parts regularly? Ooh! Um, how many of you have looked at their PU parts pages? Like there's, if you don't know it, no, that's the wrong one. Um, there's here on the left, there is packages by maintainer uploader. And every email address in the uploader field has a status page. And it's for all, for all tested distributions. So it's VZ, Squeeze, SID, and Lenny and Squeeze. Um, so in VZ, my packages are fine. Um, while in SID, um, one package of, of mine has a failure. Or where I'm in the uploaders field. Um, yeah, I leave it there. This one, yeah. And how many of you have looked at the PO part source code? Oh, more people than using it. <laughs> um, good. Um, PO parts, in short, detects policy violations. It's probably nothing new. The, na the name is for package installation, upgrading, and removal test suite. So in reality, it only detects some pi policy violations. There are many, many policy violations PU parts cannot detect or cannot detect yet or never will never detect. Um, why we are here is, for me, it's obvious. Um, I really believe that policy should be followed, that the rules are sensible, and I want my packages, not only my packages to be clean, but rather the whole Debian archive to behave in a sane way. And if there's something wrong with policy, then this should be um, discussed in the policy list, and PU Path is just the tool to detect those changes, those failures. Um, it's written by Lars Vizenius, um, but he gave up um, caring for it um, in 2008, I think. He has some ideas for a rewrite, and there was, was but that is not happening at the moment. There was a short period where some more people were hacking on PU parts, but since 2009, it's mostly me. There are some contributors from time to time, but nobody else has stepped up so far to really continuously help me, both with um, caring about the PU part source code as well as caring about the results um, which are um, generated on piatti.debian.org which is the machine which runs PU parts Debian.org. Um, 
in the last months or so, there was Scott Schaefer who contributed quite some patches. Um, I think I've applied, I don't know, seven or so in the last months. But I was too busy um, preparing DEPCONF to really to take some more patches from him. So, that, so there are some patches still in the BTS which I need to look at in the next months or so. Um, the most useful or the most not, yeah, useful patch from Scott is something that PU parts can now finally handle alternative depends. Previously, PU parts would only look at the first depends in a series of alternative, dep alternative depends. So if a package first depended on Apache or Apache 2, then PU parts would say Apache does not exist anymore, so this package is untestable, while now it detests, detects that P Apache 2 is there and can test the package. This is for the um, master-slave mode I use on PRT, where packages are only tested when all depends are already tested successfully. Well, what Lucas sometimes does is he just runs PU parts on the whole archive regardless of whether the packages are tested, which is fine if you do it for your packages, but for automatically detecting if there are, um, if for automatically detecting you don't want to have a package fail because the dependencies fail. So you only want to test the package if all the dependencies have been tested correctly. So PU parts is written in Python. In my opinion, it's very, very well written in Python. Um, but I added some rather hackage shell scripts um, to pass all the logs. There are at the moment the four suits are tested, so there are 120,000 log files, and I just grab in there for some strings. And that definitely needs to be improved. I also really want to move the code to Git, which is rather easy, but if somebody that has nothing better to do, I would be really, really happy if somebody just creates a Git repository on Alios and moves the code there. I will immediately start using it. Pardon? Okay, great. Um, yeah, PU parts Debian org is up since two and a half years. Since then, these web pages are generated. Um, in VZ, there are now over 31,000 successfully tested packages, um, th 93 failures and 272 other package uh, block files, which are due to this. So there are <laughs> some failures, um, which some the post installation maintainer script failed. I'm not. The post removal script failed, and unknown reasons, uh, which I don't know at the moment. Better? Um, so, and there are then 33 packages which where the dependency failed, and some circular dependencies um, which are where the detection is also still a problem. But that, that part of the code, the, <coughs> um, the dependency parser or the, yeah, the dependency parser where the scheduler is um, recursive code which I've spent several hours, like 20 hours staring at it and debugging it and I still only partly understand it, so that's probably not so well written, or it's too well written for me. Um, but still, it detects a lot of failures. I've, in, for testing VZ, I've ignored um, some failures which PU parts can detect. Like in VZ, I don't care about um, packet, uh, files which exist after, after purge. Because in, v, in SIT there are, where is it? Broken symlinks, this one. Due to own files after purge, there are 200 failed packages. And if I apply this to VZ, then less packages are tested and the more serious errors are not detected. But even for SIT, it would be very useful to file those 200 bugs. And if, if I continue in the speed, the talk, this buff will be over in 10 minutes. And then we, you can all file 10 bucks. And then we, yay. <laughs> yeah, sure.
Yes. Uh, so how is it? How is it for you to file bugs? Do you have scripts to that pass logs and? Not extract? yet. That's. Because my own uh, experience with few paths that it's really hard to file to pass the logs automatically just to extract the paths is interesting. So I ended up uh, rewriting rewriting something equivalent to few paths, which was easier to uh, to pass, which only with the goal is to make it easier to pass. But uh, I think that something that you can really win a lot, a lot of time if you just focus on uh, getting it easier to pass. Yeah. Um, it's on my list, but I have another slide with my three most wishes for PU parts, and that's not on there. <laughs> so that is testament of the bad preparation of that. Um, what I have is a collection of templates, which you see there. I hope that's readable on the recordings. And which are templates I use for filing bugs, um, where I have the relevant policy sections so that people will not reply saying, this, is, this, is this really a bug or something, which also takes time away. Um, but I would like a local tool, um, which I can run locally on the logs, because the, the failed logs are just 100, so I can also download them and run the tool locally. Wouldn't you said that you disabled the check for purged files? Um, wouldn't it be sensible to um, have two classes of failures, those who prevent dependencies to be built? Yes, but then I would still not treat those um, failures. I still would not treat them as failures, so the result would be the same. Because you, you can assume that if a package has these problems in SID, it will also have them in VZ. I just don't test for it in VZ. So. Don't understand. Because, <laughs> well, if at the moment, it, at the moment, every PU parts um, failure is a failure. There's no other. There are no classes of bugs. And as I'm not testing for these failures in VZ, but do test for those failures in SID, I have the same results as I would have a class of bugs which is not a critical failure. So the, the end result is the same. Yeah, I'm thinking now if that you have uh, three um, packages in a dependency line and the first is failing, if it's the result is really the same. But no, no, the, 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 in VZ the package will not fail because of a f leftover after purge. So packages which depend on that and also have these leftovers after purge are also not failing because in VZ leftovers after purge are ignored. While in SID it's a failure and the, the already the dependent package will fail and the other packages will not be tested. Yeah, and if there is a dependent package which has the same failure, it will neither be reported in SID nor in VZ. It will be reported in VZ because there the dependent pack package will not be tested against failures. <laughs> uh, I'm happy we have time, we have plenty of time. So. Um. Can I? Um. So, and SID has less packages um, being tested. These are mostly the packages where the dependency is fa failing, but it also has a lot more failures. So, but those, those failures are less critical, and while in VZ, the, um, it's only critical failures. And every day, there are two or three buggy, buggy packages found. So it's, uh, for in a while, I try to keep up with that, and every day file, file the bugs which are newly found, but it's impossible to keep up with it, basically. two to three emails or to learn about them? No, but I should probably set, turn that into a mailing list, yes. That would be a very good thing. Can somebody write this on some note? Or can you file a wish list back about that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I will not do it this week and in a week I will have forgotten everything. <laughs> And
And the good thing about book bug filing is that then bugs are f uh, fixed rather fast. While they are, if they are on, in the um, PTS, they are not f um, fixed that often. So I, I, sometimes I, I see when a package fails again, it's a new upload, I see the package failing again, and there are some candidates which I recognize as, oh, another upload, another failure, still the bug's not fixed. So filing bugs really helps. Um, so this, these are what I, I had in mind, what the three worst, um, most pressing shortcomings are. Um, use Python BTS. Currently, um, and this is really legacy from when PU parts report was not as much used as now, you had you manually move the file from the fail um, directory into the bugged directory, which is really annoying. You do it. I do it on the server which runs PU parts. I move the log file from one to the other directory, and this is really stupid because I can query the. B I use user tags anyway, so it's easy to query for that box. Um, the other shortcoming there is um, PU parts report every day scans those 120,000 log files, grabs again for the same errors, so it doesn't keep state, which is really, really horrible. But it still works, and the machine is idle a lot of time anyway, so I, don't, I do care, but I don't have, didn't have time to do it. And the other thing is the exit code, that there are, um, not, that there are fatal failures and lesser failures. Wait a second. Wait a second. So uh, mailing list as number four, and I've been thinking: is uh, would it somehow be possible to basically automatically generate a bug report? It is for some bugs. It is definitely possible. It's also possible to even generate the patch for some kinds of bugs because they are so simple, like the. Lots of packages use add user in the um, post RM scripts, and add user is not an essential package, so that will fail. If you use user add instead, which is in pass 3D, you, the post RM will succeed in purge. So that's almost, they could even create a patch automatically. But you're invited to write the code. So patches welcome, basically. Yeah, yeah, patches are definitely welcome. And there are, there are 27 wishlist bugs in the BTS. So there's a lot, many people have good ideas about what PU parts should do, but it's only me trying to implement it once in a while. So that's really what's lacking. And I mostly just lack time, but yeah, who, do, who doesn't lack time? <laughs> And most bugs found by PU parts are important or serious, by definition. Um, important bugs are like these packages left over after purge. That is a policy violation, but it's not a serious policy violation. It's, it's ugly, and, but still I don't file them as serious, really. Um, because then I would have more discussions with the maintainer if this bug is really serious or not. So I'd rather file them as important and don't have the discussion. There are some bugs which I file serious, um, like if the post ins fails, or if there are left, files left over in user local, or files left in home, or generally home, is cre home user name is created. Those are definitely serious, and, um, but mo not all are serious. Generally, PU parts has very few false positives. It has more. Um, cases probably where policy violations are not detected. Um, the only one which I think is controversial or many people is set a, fails to set up a database, um, which, which are packages which expect a uh, running database and the, where the post then fails. Um, I think those are at least important or even, even serious if the package fails to install in a CH root 
because setting up a CH root without the database is used for generating live builds for fully automatic installations, but people disagree. So that would need another discussion for which I don't have the time. Um, about fails to set up a database, um, so many of many packages use a uh, dbconfig common, yeah. and I um, I've tried packaging a package to use DB, um, and use dbconfig common, and I couldn't find any way to uh, prevent this problem. So um, maybe I just didn't find the documentation, or um, dbconfig common doesn't provide for this. Um, Um, yeah, maybe, um, does anyone know dbconfig comment and uh, can comment on that? Okay. Well, uh, dbconfig dbconf common apparently doesn't uh, provide for um, installing, uh, for supporting installing a package and uh, not having the database running. So it, uh, it basically so the package basically, so um, to have the post and succeed, you have to create the database and there's no way around it. He's saying that you can ignore it and to tell it to create the database anyway. Uh, no. uh, the system can do this or the package can do it. Okay. okay. So, DBConfig common just ignores the package from that point moment. Okay. So, uh, since the goal of pure parts is to test the packages, and the fact that uh, failing because of uh, databases is uh, controversial, uh, what I did in my pure parts, well, Rewrite uh, is that if I detect that uh, the log contains an error message about connecting to the database, I just try again after installing MySQL and Postgres, and that works, sort of. Yes, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> well, it works, so. <laughs> well, but I still, um, if I want to prepare a live builds or set up ch root, I don't want to set up the database server. I think a package should just install cleanly whatever happens because there are other ways to configure the package. I don't want to always run a database locally. And the, he yes. doesn't want to run a database locally and that's another valid use I, case. I agree, but the point is to be able to test uh, what happens after the DB configuration and uh, that enabled me to file bugs about stuff, about errors that happened after the DB configuration because pure parts has to do stuff automatically. You just need to find a way to skip that step and go on. I agree, it's a clever pragmatic approach. <laughs> at, at the moment I ignore the issue. I just file the other bugs. There are <laughs> still more bugs to be filed, so. Yeah, this is the error. I should make it bigger as well. Fun? Yeah. Uh, in my script, I grabbed for PSQL, could not connect to server, and then. <laughs> <laughs> we need another package dependency uh, relationship. We need one, one more package relationship for uh, database, for packages that should be installed when testing. I think the packages should install cleanly, however that's implemented, yes. It's not, it's not that I want to file bugs or detect those bugs. I think uh, there's a use case that this should be serious, this bug, but yeah, it's not the right place probably. Yeah, that was my idea, as I said. There are more than 30 people, which is great. We have 300 bugs to file, 30 minutes. <laughs> We 
can also talk, that's fine, there's stuff to discuss, but these bugs are really easy. Where are those? Oh, this are the uh, unknown filed after ports, 260 packages, which are really... But there are, there are other more in interesting ones, like these post-installation script fails. So if we could um, file bugs, I'm happy to go around if somebody wants to file bugs and give advice. Okay, wait for the microphone. Michael wants the microphone. Yeah, you said you had templates for filing those bugs. Are they in the package or are they just in your evolution? They're in my own folder. So wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't that be useful to share them so people yeah. could more easily file them? I think that would be useful. But you can, you can, I've used them more, you can just go to the BTS, to the bugs query PO parts, which are um, somewhere so that, would, that would lessen the barrier to entry, I guess. Pardon? It would lessen the barrier to entry if you don't yes, have to yes, look yes. for the same kind of bug and download and see and then... So there was... Just wish this bug. <laughs> Setting up the mailing list and um, sharing those templates, yes. It's, I th I'm sure that is in the to-do list. But the to-do list is also, I don't know, 300 lines or something. Wait for the microphone, please. You should really prioritize what makes other people contribute. I try. <laughs> But so far, also, I've not seen so many contributions, which, of course, is a chicken and egg problem, but the to-do list is not that big. It's small fonts, yeah. Yeah, one after the other. Okay, let's do it in here. So that was... So we already have a, a breakdown of uh, failures, and most of them are categorized, I mean, identified already for the root cause of the problem. Um, and I assume that for most of these, you already have a template. So is it a matter of writing a script that gets pointed to a web page and knows which is a template for that kind of error? and, so, and Queries the BTS to submit the bug report? Yeah, mostly. I would, that script, um, I would write the script so that it displays the bug report and ask to confirm do you really want to send this bug report? But for these files left over after purge, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, I mean, for the, for the cases which is undoubtedly a similar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's and definitely possible to start with some undoubted cases and then. I think that would be a better use of time than filing 300 bugs manually. Yes, it's just more difficult to write such a script with 50 people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be happy to have such a script, yes, definitely. That's just the user text I'm using. It's Debian QA list and user text PU parts and PU parts DO, which is mostly historic reasons to use both user text. I wanted to use user text for different categories of bugs, but somehow never got around to do that. Um, about your to-do list, have you considered switching to S-shoot to manage the shoot instead of doing it yourself? I think there's a wishlist bug for that, yes. It makes things uh, much easier. It's currently, I think the tarball is extracted manually and where well, everything is set up manually by few parts. What do you mean by manually? 
Well, that's part of the code that takes the table, extract it to some place, and... Uh, yeah, but it, that, that code is working fairly well, so why should I touch it? There are, there are other parts which are working less well, which really require more attention. That's, there are also bugs that, that should support LVM and whatnot, but that is um, really the, the ma machine is, um, <coughs> is only used 10% of the day. So it's really very idle and g um, gaining more speed is not really so useful for me. And I'm done with my slides. The last is just thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Have you just considered uh, giving people commit to the code who contribute, like Scott, for instance? Yes, sure. I'm happy to give Scott commit access and he's happy that I review the patches. But there are, I don't know, 10 people or so who have commit access. I'm generally very happy to give people commit access. I'm not sure whether it's a stupid question, but we have time. Um, would wouldn't it be uh, the right thing to merge Lincian and Pure Parts because they are slightly doing the same things? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, is Niels here? He and he can probably better explain. Yes. There. Um. Yeah, the one is doing static analysis and you're installing and purging. They both detect some po kind of policy violations, um, but Lintian is just checking the the package as it is and not the the installed system. So th those are two different um, environments which are tested. And PuPath also only cares about the binary package, which is not a problem. But Hi, uh, here's a, not a question, but uh, yeah, Kevix on IRC says, does it make sense to make this task set for bite-sized bugs for DM, DMs or people who beca become Debian contributors so you have more people to engage with? That new um, DNMs file bugs or what was the question? No, um, there are bugs called bite-sized bugs, so small bugs who everyone can t try, uh, who is not really involved in the package itself. So you could mark a package a, a bugs um, uh, with this tag and people would find it that help you without knowing about PewPath or something else. And that's uh, what Kivix wanted to, to tell on IRC. I'm not aware of many of those bugs. Okay, thank you. But I can look, we have time, so let's look. Yes. Do, 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 do. No, those are not really easy. Those many of those wish list bugs. Um, this to do well yeah what, what, I'm not sure what the question was but maybe the point was that you could tag some of the bugs that are filed by pure parts people as easy because you know that they're easy and so contributors could uh, fix them more easily without that, doing much that's but maybe that was not the point. I mean, I yeah, really but if the that's question, the case, then I would say no, because that would even put more load on me for filing bugs, and I don't want yeah, that. Yeah, but that's true, but 
usually all the bugs are in the same category, so you could just say like this category is easy to file uh, to fix. But I guess it's a general Debian problem, and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but th there are bugs like when the dependency is missing. Those are really easy, but y then the patch is also not needed, and so. Maybe I'm not really com com used to this bite size bug category thing. <laughs> I plan to do a release of PU parts before DebConf, but I failed, so I will just commit this to my to-do. Okay. <laughs> or writing this report Back to helper. Seraphine? So, I see the page that lists all the packages that uh, fail with a specific failure mode, um, and it says please file bugs. So, how are these moved? How are these moved out of the page once you file the bug? I How do I know that someone has already, other than checking manually to the BTS? I log in to Piatti and move them from the fail directory to bugged, which okay. is why I really want to use Python BTS because that is stupid manual work. Yeah. Completely agreed, and I know this since two years or something. So th the script that would automatically submit the bugs would also have to move? No. No, we sh should the next thing I'll do is add support for Python BTS. There are more use, there, um, I, there are more use cases for heavy, um, using Python BTS when I can also query, display the bugs and can display several bugs per package. At the moment I just, um, I just link to the, to the BTS to the package of the package but I don't link to the specific bug. Yeah. So using Python BTS to query the BTS is way better than keeping state that the package has been f filed a bug because um, I cannot really detect unless the next test is successful that the bug has been fixed. So that is really, using Python BTS is more on higher on my to-do list than writing this report tool. Uh, for P which which list? Uh, oh, you s you find them on PU parts Debian org, and then you either go to VZ sit or squeeze, and there you have them. PU parts Debian org. It's it's just this about page, but you go on the left to whatever VZ, and then there it is. Everything generally is linked in the left side. The documentation, with the SVN repository, the bugs filed by PU parts, the bugs in PU parts, the to-do list is linked there. So everything is there. Okay. Then let's finish that here. Thank you and have fun with PU parts. <laughs>